Let's take a look at the teams. It's an old All Black adage that you never change a winning team, so it is an unchanged lineup today with eight Aucklanders and two from North Harbour and four more from the city in the reserves. The team should feel at home in the city and the ground today. Kieran Crowley at fullback has played here before in a test against Australia in 1986. And Ian Jones, being from North Auckland, possibly won't have played too many times on this ground. But in this company, with his newfound reputation as a test player, he'll be at home as a fully-fledged test international in this team. And this is the 15 men who will represent Scotland this afternoon. And the side shows two changes from last Saturday in Dunedin. Number 11, Alex Moore, an Australian-born player, makes his first Test match debut in place of Ivan Tuklo. And in the front row, Ken Milne comes back for his 11th cap, a move which is made to ensure Scotland do better in the lineouts than they did in the first Test. Finley Calder plays his 28th and last Test this afternoon, while ahead of him, number one, Ian Milne, plays his 44th international, and the Scottish captain is number one, David Sol. Three minutes into the match and Gavin Hastings is given a long shot at the post. A real test for Scottish character from five yards inside his own half. That's a decent nudge. That's a great kick. A great start for the Scots and Hastings and Grant Fox traded penalties. We rejoin the match midway through the first half. Scotland leading six points to three. Well, a good look at this lineup, looking right down the line. Oh, good tap by Chris Gray, number four. Here's Chalmers across to Scott Hastings. Well, that's a good looking kick from Scott Hastings. It's a beauty. That is a magnificent kick by Scott Hastings. And the Scots swing back onto the attack at the halfway point of the first half. They lead by six to three. A big skinny kick down into the corner has given Scotland a real chance now. It's a New Zealand throw in. All penalties so far. Mike Brewer and Finlay Calder, the two number sevens. The tail gunners off the back. Calder today playing his last international. Cronin with his arm up. Jones having a tussle with him. Fitzpatrick to throw. To Gary Lutton, that's very close to the line with Kenneth Mill driving in there. There's the corner flag. Touch judge Bill Thomas and Steve McDowell concentrating more on taking some uh, retribution on one of the players in there. But my word, that's tough stuff in there, real good. Mike Jones was a big drive from the line, too. Kenneth Mill, I think it was, that went in there really hard for the corner. The replacement hooker who came in missed the first test. Big chance now for the Scots. How's their hooking? Oh, nice little move away. This is Stanger. Yes, he's got it down. Tony Stanger. A very intricate and well-worked move from the scrum. And Tony Stanger continues his excellent record as a try-scoring winger. That's his seventh try in his eighth test. Look at this. Armstrong round went wide. Finley called it, took out Bashup. Stanger came in and took it and wrenched his way across. Try for Tony Stanger. Here it is again. Well, it all started with that marvellous kick down from Scott Hastings, and then they did a lovely little dummy here. And this wing is really showing John Kerwin type strength to get across that line. Gavin Hastings to kick. Three superb goals. Scotland now leading by 12 points to three. The try by Tony Stanger is converted. Keith, it was a great scrum too. It was a really good scrum. They could afford almost to have two running off as dummies. And they still held the ball from the back. I think they go from time to time. Worried times for the New Zealand team and Wayne Shelford. 12 points to three. Fox from halfway. Scotland playing with plenty of spirit here. As is chucked back by John Jeffrey. Oh, it's a bit untidy here, but Chalmers has done well. But he knocked it on, according to Derek Bevan. I think the feature of that try, you know, one of the features was the teamwork. Players coming from everywhere. And in fact, it was Sean Lanine who drove a Tony Stanger across the line. Yes, they got him behind him. Oh. 
a lot of talk about tackling in the New Zealand team there at, uh, this week with the loose ball from Mike Brewer, Miss Blundell, skidded underneath the stage. Yes, I, and uh, Buck Shelford had it well wrapped up though. He was just too close to the line to stop him. All Blacks have a chance to reply here, attacking near the 22, held by Shelford, now Basham. Away to Fox, missing little to Stanley, straight out to Karen Crowley. Now could this be a repeat, kick and chase. Beautifully read by Armstrong. Back from Scott Hastings to Gavin Hastings. Well, Kieran Crowley, the old kick and chase. We saw it in the first test. And it didn't quite come off today, or hasn't yet. Well, he was actually too far away from his opposite number when he started to chip it. He didn't have the same timing as he had in the first test. 12 points to three. Scotland have the advantage of uh, what really is only a light sou-westerly. Jones getting high. McDowell gets it on the second take. The All Blacks looking now to bring some control into their forward effort. Steve McDowell has it in there somewhere. Yes, there he is, number one. John Jeffrey tries to get out of the road. All Blacks 15 metres short of the line. They still have it. Now they go to ground. Here's Richard Lowe. Lowe still has it. Will we get the smile? Richard Lowe. No, it's pretty serious at this stage, but it's a try nonetheless. Here he is, Richard Lowe. Driving low and hard, maintaining his feet, which is really the key to this try. And the All Blacks join in. And Richard Lowe, hanging on like grim death, just slams it down. Try, signaled by Derek Bevan. Fox is handy. So Fox converts the try scored by this man, Richard Lowe. And the difference between the two sides, 14 minutes out from half-time is three points. Scotland lead by 12 to nine. Let's catch the mood of the sideline now. Brendan Telfer's down there. Well, i tell you what, Keith, uh, Mr. Bevan is going to have his work cut out here, I think, controlling these lineouts because there is a lot of niggle going on. It's abundantly clear that the Scots have decided to block Ian Jones out of these lineouts. And if you watch Jones closely in the lineout, you'll see he's got two or three men marking him closely. And there's been one or two incidents already in the last five minutes down here near the New Zealand goal line where we've seen temper started to fray. It's very tight and it's very keen in the lineouts at the moment. Brendan Telfer on the sideline. Grant Fox kicks out. 13 minutes before the end, that's Ian Jones there. Away goes Steve McDowell with Alan Wetton. It's bounced uh, into open play. Here is a chance for Scotland. Hastings from Lenin. This is Gray. It's outside the New Zealand 22. Scotland get momentum rolling. Armstrong, away to Chalmers. Lee is left out. Oh, Gavin Hastings in brilliantly. Alex Moore chasing number 11. Yes! Try for Alex Moore and a sensational score for Scotland. A try on his test debut for Alex Moore. And what a brilliant counter-attack it was when the ball skidded away from an all-black charge with Steve McDowell and Alan Wetton, I think it was. This is the last part where Chalmers put the long cut-out pass. Lenin was a sort of a decoy here that went from brother to brother. Then the kick-out, and look how it's very close to the corner and the sideline. But Alex Moore chased, dived, judged it beautifully. The try for Scotland. Well, it was a lovely move. This is this is good football by the Scottish backs. Look how he turned and it took two men out there, did uh, Scott Hastings. His brother slid into the outside gap and a lovely little chip over here. Alex Moore just makes it.
Great goals, a try on his test debut for Alex Moore, and Scotland have extended the lead out to nine points again, and there's 11 minutes still to go to half time. The incredible Grant Fox reduces the deficit to six points just before the half-time whistle. Scotland leading into the break, 18 points to 12. At the resumption, Ian McGeekin's worst fears were realised as Fox maintained his 100% kicking record with his fifth penalty and suddenly New Zealand were back in the match. We join play 10 minutes into the second half. As the rain tumbled down, Gavin Hastings had his opportunity to reply to Fox's tally with this kick into the wind with a wet ball. Away to the right this time. So no goal this time from Gavin Hastings. That's his first miss of the day. And Fox is going to kick it quickly. Hastings has got himself in a good position. He's looking for the supporting players. He has Alex Moore, the left winger. Here's Chris Gray, the big lock forward. He got across. 10 metre line, all black territory. Armstrong across to Chalmers. Here's Scott Hastings. Here's Lanine. Good little run from Sean Lanine, 10 metres out from the 22. Armstrong again, Chalmers. And that's great play by the Scots. That really is outstanding play. It was a good series of play, but I still think Chalmers should have unloaded. He had them on the back foot and turning around, running the wrong way. You've got to give it away on the blind side when you're only 25 yards out. You've got to score, not chip into corners. This is a big line now. All Blacks ball, just near their own line. Tapped on the Scottish side untidily, though. Cleverly freed by Chalmers. Stolen away, though, by Walter Little. Yes, it hadn't been slippery. He was away on an intercept there. Walter Little. Well, it's the Scots ball to the scrum. Some good attacking options here as we look at Walter Little. Yes, well, it's obvious if they win this ball, I'd say they'll use their mastermind, that is Gavin Hastings, who's out. On the right there, just out of your picture, on the right. Scrum has collapsed. They might have to change it again because they've shown their hand now. Buck Shelford's come off. You'll see him standing off the scrum there on the left of the New Zealand scrum. Armstrong with the feet. Here's White. Tried to slip it away to Jeffrey. The ball lost forward. Referee playing advantage. Played the first infringement, which was the knock-on by Scotland. And so it will now be an all-black scrum. Near the 22, 18 points to 15, and we've had 10 minutes in the second half. That's a much vaunted loose forward trio by Scotland, but they've made a few mistakes today losing the ball. That's the third time in one of their combination moves. Walter Little with the clearance. It's high and wide, and Moore is covering. Big kick by Walter Little. The wind is behind him for that kick. And that's driven them back 60 metres. So that's the end of that Scotland attack. They'll have to work their way back up in the mud to come on uh, on attack again. Well, this is New Zealand. This is a critical time of any rugby test is this first 10 minutes. And they've already got into it. We're on the outside of 10 minutes now. And they've rather really poured in. Derek White at the back against Alan Witt. Armed on the New Zealand side. Called us off the Fox. Here's Stanley on the crash ball. Caught by Craig Chalmers. Bashup's gone in digging deep. Bashup. Walter Little scooped it up nicely. Terry Wright. Referee says play on. And Hastings will save again. Stanger. There is an injured player. Scott Hastings there. Tough boys, these Hastings lads. There's actually four of them, you know. Another one on the plate for the Scottish schools. Moore meets Kerwin. 
Jeffrey adds his support. Crowley's in there. I think Crowley's wondering how he got involved. Well, it's a penalty for Scotland. So Hastings checks the mark. The penalty must be taken from the mark or a parallel line behind it. This is the same tactic, I think, to allow New Zealand to kick it out. Scott against the throw. So Crowley goes as much distance as he can. And my word, that's one of uh, DB Clark proportions. So it's all gone wrong here for Scotland. Hastings, it's all gone wrong from here. And that's a penalty against Kevin Hastings. Good call by referee Bevan. Hastings just took on a bit too much that time. He was on a roll, but Brewer threw him down. How did Brewer get there, though? How did Brewer get there? I presume yes. he ran up there. <laughs> what do you mean to say? Was he outside the, the this 10-meter circle thing? Well, yes, he probably was. The depth came back. Well, I thought that uh, I, you know, it seemed unlikely that he could get there. <laughs> Twenty-six minutes gone, second half. This kick to level the scores. He's an amazing man, and that's leveled the game up at 18 each. Well, New Zealand and Scotland in 1983 played the highest ever drawn international at 25 all. They're having another similar close tussle today. Mind you, they also played the lowest ever drawn match once. Yes. Little. Hello. 14 each. Fourteen minutes remain of this tour by this very brave and gallant and very popular Scottish team. Can they secure a win? They are hoping so desperately for. Both captains hard at work as Gary Wetton takes it for the All Blacks. Scotland still leading in the try scoring stakes by two to one. Here's Gavin Hastings coming forward again. Brewer throws him down again. All Blacks fired up now. Here's Gary Wetton. Well, he's played in some funny positions in this test series. That was at first 5 8. Very slippery ball falls for Fox. Armstrong win at work. Everybody's having trouble with the ball now. And it's finally Gavin Hastings. In the first test, we saw Gary Wett lurking on the wing. Today, we'll see him at first five. That's a new one. Well, Billy Bush said before the game, he thought the last 10 minutes would tell us the story. We've got 12 to go. It's 18 all. Sean Fitzpatrick on the 22 in Scottish territory. Jones starting to win some good lineouts. Now, Little. Kerwin's involved again. The Scottish defence in centre field has been quite outstanding. Coming now for Basham. Across to right. Fitzpatrick out on the wing. And they're in touch. Scotland only have 40 men on the field. Gary Armstrong is off at the moment. The big old black show. Offside. Finley Calder is penalised. Ian McGeekin now on his feet. Won't be an easy kick for Fox. It's only five metres in from the touchline. Reserve halfback Greg Oliver. He may well be required for the last nine minutes of this game. Six out of 
of six today for Brian Fox. And the All Blacks in front. For the first time in the game, with eight minutes to go, they lead by 21 points to 18. Oh, yes, just Auckland and New Zealand certainly owe a lot to that wee man. Fox, been a tremendous kicker, so accurate. There, gave large to it again, Harvest. So Craig Chalmers kicks out Gary Armstrong. You'll see him back in the game. He came slowly across. He's got a problem with his knee. There's a little bit of tape underneath just trying to hold him up and hold him together for the last nine minutes of this tour. So the All Blacks in the lead for the first time in the game. Yes. Seven minutes to play. Down. to box. And there's a real problem for Gary Armstrong. He's at halfway. He's having a little chat with the physio and Greg Oliver. And uh, that's the end of this. Dr. Donald McLeod taking him away. That's the end of this game, we've seen. Yes, and Hastings is still staying out to the right of this ground, which is the easiest way for Oliver to pass it, as you can imagine. With Bashup chasing him around, I should say they'll go to the right. So Derek White, Oliver, Gavin Hastings meets Shelford. Oliver again. Away to Chalmers. Oh, lost the knee to Alan Whitten. To Brew it was. 22 metres line. Bashup spinning it wide. Shelford decided to take it in close. Alan Whitten with the ball. My word, the Scots have committed themselves physically. Fitzpatrick this time to Fox. For Stanley, Kerwin, Crowley's with him. What a tussle this is. That's like all in wrestling down there. As the clock ticks on, five minutes to play. Did you see that? You see in the foreground, Gavin Hastings sorting out some of that blindside defence with Alex Moore. Hastings is up in defence. Bashup. Kerwin. Bashup. Loose ball. In touch. There's no way Scotland's going to win from down that corner. New Zealand have kept them pushed back there. Three minutes to play. Yes, that's what they've got to do. You notice Chris Gray got back there. He's had a tremendous game today. Number four for Scotland. So Kenneth Milne to throw the second stick away. It's still 21-18 to New Zealand. All Blacks line out ball. Called it through. Hacked ahead by Ken Milne. And that's a real relief to the Scots, but they want to be another 50 metres downfield. Under two minutes to go. They're going to call another short line out here. Yes, that's what they're going to do. If they want to go into immortality, they've got to have a crack. This is the last chance. 21 points to 18. Ball's loose. Chalmers up to Lenin. They have possession here, the Scots. 10 metre line, their own territory, and a penalty. They really have to make something of this. Oliver taps it up to David Soule. Flicks it to Calder. Almost intercepted by Walter Little. He knocked it on, though. A timely little interception there by Walter Little. Even though he knocked it on, he stopped the movement. <laughs> he's been going for them. That's the second he's had a crack at. About a minute and a half left in this match. Oliver looks for Lenin. Lenin doubling round. Good tackle by Fox. Here it is again. Sol. What a marvellous leader he's been on this tour and in this game today. Oliver waits again. Now Chalmers. Little kick from Scott Hastings. Not a bad one either. Terry Wright did well. And hello to head high tackle. Head-high tackle made on Terry Wright. And 
and that might be it for the Scots. I thought that was rather tough, that head high. I mean, he really wrapped him up like a bear hug rather than uh, taking his head off as a stiff arm or anything that one might call an illegal tackle. Just over a minute left in the game. Fox makes no mistake. Well, what a contribution from this man today, Grant Fox. Five penalty goals and a conversion. Total of 17 points. The only try scored by Richard Lowe. Scotland, last ditch attack. Here's Chalmers. Away to Tony Stanger. Again, Terry Wright. He's been called upon to take some high kicks today. That's a clever little kick by Terry Wright. Which will ensure probably that they come back to the 22. Although Gavin Hastings might decide it's too late for that. No, he puts it down. And back we go to the 22. Just seconds left in the game. Chalmers. Nicely flipped back to Calder. And Chris Gray. All Blacks were standing off. They've conceded another 10. Now corner again. Sol. Just on the All Black side of halfway. Time is up on the clock. Now Levine. Away to Stanger. Derek White. And an All Black boot puts it away. And it's all over. The All Blacks have won it. By 21 points to...